All right, heading into or out of week 42, we're going to hit the news for the no code news. There's links below for Substack and links for these articles and other ways you can support the channel. So yeah, let's hit the news. All right, the first one is the N8N Workflow Builder. Now, uh, this has been in the news a little bit. It's actually been in the news a while back, but I think it just kind of they're timing it again to hit the AI uh, ChatGPT stuff. It's interesting. There's a good video where he just does a great job here. Um, this guy here where he just goes over into detail, like what's the benefits? Does it really work? In the end, uh, you know, it, it's interesting. I'm glad something's there. And I think all these tools are getting that much more easier to use. Let's see what happens in the space. All right. So anything that in this space that makes this stuff easier is a win. Is it ready yet? Where is it compared to Zapier? Where is it compared to Make? Where is it compared to the Opal? Where is it compared to ChatGPT Agent Kit? I don't know. You can only right now get it on the hosted version, which again, they're going to change and, and, and modify soon. So I guess just keep an eye on it. It's it's all good. The easier stuff gets, the better. Um, but I'll touch on that in a moment too. Bubble IO, uh, some announcements there. I mean, I don't use Bubble, but I've tried it in the past. And one of the hardest things for me with Bubble was to use it. You had to become an expert at Bubble or good. So I had to do something back then where I was trying to build a chat system and I had to integrate with OpenAI. And it was just really hard for me. I would love to go back and I would love to see if this stuff makes it easier where you don't have to be a master of Bubble, but because Bubble has all the Lego bits to put together, it can build these things more efficiently and effectively and, and just be more robust than just vibe coding. So it's a good mix of vibe coding and not remaking everything you need, but bringing them together. So it's it's really interesting. So I got to get myself back there. I got to figure out the particular situations because I use software right now for things and some other stuff. So when will I need that? Depends on the project. And it looks like mobile. I mean, if I hit a mobile app, yeah. The next one is Zapier and AWS. Uh, I mean, great. If you're stuck in AWS, this is great. Will it make those companies who are so bent on AWS also be comfortable with a software solution that's hosted somewhere else? I don't know. Uh, it's interesting. It's it's good for them. Chat automatic history. This one I meant to remove. I don't really care. It's in their UI, not in their API. History is key. Context is key. If they make that automatic in their API, then that's big news. Uh, ChatGPT Slack. So we get this moment where we can just have chat GPT in integration with Slack. And one thing I want to mention here is that this stuff is getting so much easier. And they announced it, OpenAI announced how they're trying to bring you into their chat system versus building an app or a web UI, right? So now you're in their chat system doing these things. And it's really just more and more obvious to me that code is going away, uh, except in those unique cases or more importantly, in the foundational systems that need to then run all this. But that foundational system needs a lot less developers to then enable those businesses to do these cool, complex things. Uh, so it's just another example. I have like five of them here of bringing it, making it just easier to build complex interactions. Now, one thing I want to mention with this is you get to this point here, but you have Slack in it talks to ChatGPT, but then your ChatGPT talks to your the ChatGPT talks to your MCP. So you can easily start bringing these things back around. So it's not just ChatGPT and your staff talking to it, but it's using the tools you gave it and the MCPs for your business to get stuff done. And that is really cool. And that just continues to uh, simplify the process of enabling AI to do stuff that you need to get done. So yeah, good stuff there. All right, OpenAI and Salesforce, but let's get back to 11 Labs. These are just interesting announcements with 11 Labs. It's back to what I was saying before. These companies are just making it easier to integrate with them. I have customers who want voice systems to answer the phone, do support calls, reach out to people. And 11 Labs is making that easier and easier. So it's no longer Vappy than 11 Labs than an N8N or something. It's, it's just 11 Labs. So as they start to surface this functionality on top of their awesome voice ability and make it so pluggable and integratable, that is a big deal. So it's good to see them. They just, This is like the third time in a row they've been in the news here. All right, just a quick ad here. I like this Ridge charger. It's the Ring MagSafe compatible magnetic power bank. And I have an Android phone, so sometimes I need it. But here's an Apple phone. 
And you can see that it not only does MagSafe in the stand and everything, but you'll see in a moment it can connect via the lightning port for the older phones. That's what I really like about it. You got to remember when you do wireless, you're always losing energy as you charge. So with the wired charging, you get faster charge and just, you know, you're going to get all the charge into the phone. And of course it has USB-C, so we win there as well because, I mean, it's USB-C and it can hook up to my Android phones and any future Apple phone that I most likely won't own, but other people in my family do. So yeah, that's it. And it hook connects to the new uh, Google phone, so that's a great win as well. So there you go. Nice, strong connection. It will charge that way. And of course, you have the stand as well. All right. I mean, uh, I have some links below. If you use those, it does help to support the channel. So please give it a go. Thank you very much. Open AI Salesforce, uh, Jan. I mean, Salesforce is amazingly popular. Um, I, I think in the end, it just reminds me again, it's hard to know sometimes if these are just deals or if it's real or hype or whatever, but to, to go that much deeper into these systems and make it easier to integrate goes back to the Slack, goes back to the 11 labs where, you know, I could then integrate with Salesforce through my ChatGPT window and not have to write the UI and all the code. So it is good. And it is just more evidence of, of how these things are going to connect together. And again, AI agentic MCPs, tools, and then access to this these systems so it knows how to do these things. We're going to see one in a mo moment with Notion. Oh, here it is with Notion. Same idea. So if we look at the Notion one, it's the same idea of like, hey, this thing can actually uh, have context and it can also get some stuff done for you. With the Notion one, it's context aware and it can do things. And, and to me, this is where this stuff gets better and better for all of us to, as business owners, not all of us as builders, because it's going to keep getting easier there too. So we always have to find our footing and our place in the hierarchy or the, the process. Because in the end, it's business owners with ideas, with money, who need you to do something to make more money or save money. They bring you in to do it, but you're seeing like these amazing pluggable systems that they need less of us or our skill is not so much in the tech, but in the business side. So anyways, this Notion one is an interesting one because you can hand a team Notion and you could bring all of this to the table without any building. Yeah, it's tricky. It's really interesting. I get to try it more because I have companies who do have really smart people working there. They're technically savvy, but they always can't connect the dots. But if Notion could help them with this, then that would be a pretty big change. I basically don't want to build things for them anymore unless they need me to, just because that to me is the old way of doing it. If I can enable them to get their work done with AI, with Manus, with Notion, in their own tools, and that's the win. Okay, so make.com just had their event. And so, you know, I mean, it looks interesting. I think I pulled out a couple of things here. So again, another AI assistant that builds those scenarios. So just a good example of how easy this is going to get. I think we're heading into that moment in time where we've discovered a certain pattern and paradigm that solves X percent of the problems. So therefore, we all these companies are, are reacting now by uh, enabling those patterns to be just a prompt or chat away. And in those things that are edge cases or unique, yeah, you might have to go build them with an N8N or make.com. But in the meantime, you could just naturally chat and get it done. That's another example of where this is going. There was a governance and uh, enterprise adoption. Again, just some more news about how uh, just the no-code stuff is just being more of a go-to. Uh, I'll leave a link to that one. This is a great time in this industry to either A, switch over to no code, or B, if you're new to things and you're trying to figure out where to get your footing in, AI, no code. To me, no code is more important because you need to do no code to then bring the AI effectively. Very rarely can you just do AI. So no code is solving a lot of my customers' problems. Not just automations, and I'm going to have a big training on this where it's like how to make it your back-end system that does all the APIs, the cron jobs, and the scripts. This one's really exciting. Tooljet, uh, again, if they pull this off, and I haven't had time to look at it yet, but it's like next on my list of the big list. This is another no-code UI builder that could even low-code. So, oh, replacing low-code, great, great, good, good terminology there. And so if you could use this in their AI prompt builder, again, just re repeat, repeat, repeat. Everybody's doing these AI prompt builders. I know OpenAI hit the news, but they weren't the first one doing this at all. It's been done by Flowwise and other vendors out there. But my point is they're all heading in this direction to 
beyond the hype, make it that easy to build solutions. All right, and then the only other things I wanna hit here is some of the shares on my website. Now, I have ads up here, and I'm not doing ads in the videos anymore. I have a mid-roll ad that I throw in. I'm paying for an editor, things like that. So supporting the channel helps. I'll put more ads up here if you see things that you're interested in, just click and buy, like me, buy too much stuff. But this site, I just start throwing stuff here during the week because it's really easy. It's built into my uh, YouTube playlist. And so again, I, I mentioned this video here where he just does a great job. He has some great videos. I mean, this is someone who just does a good job of really going into de detail and scraping and stuff too. This other one's been really fun. This guy, uh, or person who put this together, uh, I think he does this one too, where he's just grabbing the trending stuff from GitHub. And it's just a brilliant idea and he does a really good job putting it together. It inspires you, it gets you thinking, you find things you wouldn't have find, found, found otherwise. So I highly suggest this video about, you know, what's trending on GitHub. Uh, really good stuff there. All right, I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, this is about the average size. I'm trying to get a feel for the size of this. I'll be pulling in more sources as I get a feel for where else and what else. But hopefully you can leave comments to give me any other ideas and give me a sense if I'm missing anything that I should be um, researching and adding to my AI systems that help me gather this news. And then again, there's links to Substack. Please join. That does help if you be a paid subscriber there. It helps a ton. And then of course, all these like ads and placements help. Even though I'm not, I've turned off the Google ads because they were annoying people, but you still have to see one ad, which is my mid roll that I get paid to do sometimes. <laughs> I definitely get paid if you use them. But all right, thank you very much. I'll see you next week for the news.